Hello, so I have um, the question 1 to 10 uh, from 2020 TSA as promised. So uh, yeah, let's get right ahead and look at it. So first things first, floor, argument. So whenever you do this, remember conclusion first, then the argument, then the underlying floor. With this one, find the floor in your mind first and then match the answers. It's usually the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to simplify as I read along. 21st century, there is a rise or there's been a rise in the number of people, proportion of people. So that's important, isn't it? It's not the total number. Um, well, I suppose it, it technically is, but you know, we don't want to assume. So of people being diagnosed by medical professionals as having a mental illness. Um, at the turn of the century, the number in Canada was uh, over 30% in one year and um, in the US they found that twice the number of people, young people that were diagnosed with a mental disorder in 2018 as compared to 2003. Uh, WHO uh, estimates that by 2028 depression is going to be the second leading type of disability worldwide. It is clear that aspects of the modern world make it more difficult for pe people to maintain good mental um, health. This last sentence is the conclusion. The argument being because we ha are diagnosing more people with mental illness, very obviously the flaw there is going to be um, what could be causing this higher diagnosis rate that isn't simply have people having um, difficulty with mental health. So we're looking for something else that explains the number of diagnoses going up. Um, a. Changes in healthcare and a decrease in stigma attached to mental illness may be responsible for high diagnosis rate. Just as we wanted, that fits in very nicely indeed. We are diagnosing more simply because uh, the stigma is going down and so more people are perhaps coming forward to get diagnosed. Um, so that is question one. Um, Number two, so in the game of TIG ball, two teams compete against each other to try to score points. We've got uh, a penalty is five points, a TIG down is eight points, and then a transformation is three points. However, in order to get a transformation, you must have a TIG down. So which of the following is the only one that is possible, okay? So this is one of the um, key moments where people may lose kind of silly marks is where you see possible or not possible. So just really watch out for that. So which one is possible? Okay, so I want to go through and see what combinations are possible because these numbers are quite small. I would probably just try and figure out how many of these, um, basically the order of starting from smallest number I can achieve and then going upwards hopefully to 21. So let's have a look here. So the smallest number of points we can get is just a penalty by itself. So that would be five, right? So um, obviously none of them are including five, but that's what we're going to start with. The second number of points, I guess, is just to get a tick down by itself. So that would be eight points. You could also um, get uh, an eight and then you could add a three, right? So you could get a tick down plus a uh, transformation. One missing in here actually, because you can score two penalties in a row that would give you 10. So, so far we've got this combination. So we can immediately see this nine is not actually possible. So we'll get rid of one as we go along. Um, so uh, 11 still in the running. Can we do a 12? No, we can't. So we're gonna cut that one out as well. Can we do a 13? Again, we cannot because to get 13, you need like two penalties and then a transformation, but you can't have a transformation without a tick down. Okay, so we're left with two now, okay? So in order to make the 11, that's no problem. Can we make the 21? Um, yes, so we can get a penalty followed by a tick down, um, which would give 13 and we can get another tick down so that's going to be the 588 eight, and that would give us 21 so b is the answer question three so an underlying assumption of the argument again we're going to find the conclusion then the argument then the assumption so uh, in the uk we are engrossed by entertainment we do it more than we sleep etc the aim of it is to create a situation where emotions can be excited without affecting real life while it's good, it can become something that takes away our emotional energy. When this happens, the real world seems boring and this can undermine social cohesion. Uh, our increasing use of entertainment is then threatening our well-being. So that's the conclusion, but um, threatening our well-being, that's obviously very a bit of a jump, right? So we're basically saying because it saps our emotional energy, it's undermining social cohesion, which in then in turn threatens our well-being. So there's kind of two, um, I would say two assumptions really that, um, you know, that if the real world's boring, it would undermine social cohesion. And then the second one being that undermining social cohesion somehow threatens our well-being. So I'm going to look for an assumption either of those would work. So um, A, our well-being depends on social cohesion. Um, yeah, that, that, that sounds right. 
um, because as I said, um, our well-being, threatening our well-being depends on that. That is a bit of a jump. Uh, let's just check to make sure the other ones aren't right. People prefer entertainment to food and drink. That's already stated, that's not an assumption. Viewers copy the behavior they see in entertainment media, not part of the argument. Emotions pose a threat to society. I mean, that's a link because we're saying emotions threat uh, attack social cohesion, which then attacks our well-being. So it's kind of skipped a link there. The general public are addicted to entertainment, doesn't say that. Number four, so main conclusion, nice and easy then. Again, just look for the normative statement, okay? So you're gonna run through, um, they were wrong. That is normative, yeah? So that's obviously going to refer to the sentence before. So previously, theories of aging assumed that emotional experiences would follow a similar pathway towards dysfunction. So we're saying that aging assumed that emotional experience would uh, follow a similar pathway towards dysfunction. So what would follow a similar pathway? Old age is associated with physical decline, health issues become more common and memories get fuzzier. So basically health declines, so we would expect emotional experience to also decline. I would probably even after that just run through and kind of clean up to make sure that I've understood the entire passage properly. But I've got a fairly good idea, let me see if I can find an answer. If I can't, I would then probably go and read the whole thing, but not before. Um, it, it does take a bit of practice because obviously you have to be pretty confident that you found the right thing if you want to skip that many steps but you know if you do practice and you feel good about it go for it so a not everyone experiences the negative physical decline in old age often depicted in the media not quite that's um, more speaking about an individual experience in old age people experience both positive and negative emotions less strongly that is uh, not what's being said there I'll quickly run through to make sure that's not being said here old age negative emotions positive emotions become more common okay so that's not true because positive is becoming more common being freed from the demands of work allows retired people to feel happier that is not in the conclusion older people find better ways of avoiding stress and using their time productively again not part of the conclusion assumptions that the emotional aspects of aging mirror the mirror the physical aspects were wrong one really good thing about just skipping straight to the part that we are looking at is that it doesn't leave you much time to second guess yourself because if you looked at these other ones after reading this passage i would imagine you might doubt yourself and think okay i mean it did say that i mean they are arguing that i mean am i sure about this but when you kind of just ignore everything just find what you think is the conclusion and then look solely for that there's only one answer that really makes any sense because that is the only one similar to our conclusion Number five, okay, parallel reasoning. We love these types of ones. So let's put in some X and Y. You are allowed to vote in the general election. So you can do X, you are allowed to do X if you are at least 18 years old, if you are Y. You have reached uh, 18, so you, uh, you have done Y, so you can do X. So this is all dependent on you are allowed to do something given that you meet a condition, okay? So A, you can contain, Again, there's no other easy, quicker way to do this. You have to read through all of them. You can obtain foreign currency from this bank. So you can do something X if you cannot, or you cannot, okay, so you cannot do X if you cannot produce acceptable identification, if you cannot do Y, um, you cannot produce the required um, identification. Therefore, we cannot let you have the foreign currency, okay? So, this is, um, I would say, slightly different to the um, argument above because um, in this case, it's like conditional on you being able to provide something um, as opposed to like you fulfilling a certain condition, if that makes sense. So it's a slightly different argument that it's saying there. Um, so I'm going to discount A. B, you can visit your grandmother in hospital. So X is allowed, providing you have no Y. So providing you meet the condition of no illness. As you have no illness, you do meet the condition of Y, so you will be able to visit your grandmother. That's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Six, a teacher is organizing a trip to the local zoo for 20 students. Of the 20 students, 12 are 11 to 15, so children, and eight are 16 to 18. Tickets cost 13 pounds uh, roughly for Y, uh, the adults, and then 10 pounds roughly for the younger children. The reason I am doing a little bit of a roundup, five pence in each case, um, is because if you do five pence and then you do times 20, that only gives you, um, you know, 100p. So it's only gonna be one pound difference. But if you look at these, these are like more than one pound difference, even the smallest gap. So I'm happy to round up and know that I'm probably still gonna be able to find the right answer. 
Um, in this case, every four students under 16, they must have one teacher supervising them. We've got 12 kids. Um, we want the minimum, so three teachers. So it's actually going to be three adult tickets. Even if we add on the extra 15 pence discrepancy, we're still going to be able to find the right answers. So we should be all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 13 times 11, which is going to give us 143. Um, and then I'm going to do the um, 12 times 10, which is going to give us 120, and I'm going to get 163. So obviously it is going to be this one here. Okay, so the pen Pentarathon challenge is a competition in which five athletes compete against each other and five marathon races run on consecutive days. Here are the points, seven, five, three, two, one, according to what place you come. So obviously there's only five races, so you're going to get at least uh, one point if you come last. And now we want to see who finished in a different position in each of the five races. Super easy. What you just need to see is the difference. So after the first race, second race, you know, whatever, we need to make sure that the gap is different every time to ensure they came a different place every time. So in this one, again, I would probably just go in order until I found one that fit because there's not a huge amount to look for here. It'll be very quick. So Colin, we're going to go seven plus seven plus two plus one plus two. That's a repeat. So not different. He came um, fourth twice. Jason, one, three, two, seven, one. So no, he came fifth twice. Um, Kyle, three, seven, five, three, nope, he came third twice, null, two, five, seven, one, three, yes, he came different every time, and Ray, five, one, three, five, so no, he came second twice. Okay, between 1987, da 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 da, da I'm not even, I mean, something's happening here, we're looking at a graph, we know that it's going to be something based on this, go straight to the question. Which, oops, sorry, which one of the following statements is false? Okay, again, don't let it catch you out, sometimes it says true, sometimes it says false, just be really, really careful. So go in order, easy. The revenue from sales of CD singles grew over year, so CD singles is the white, so we just have to make sure it's growing year on year grown uh, from here to here, yes, 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 so it's not that one, that is true. Revenue from sales of seven inch, this stripy one here, fell every year, smaller, 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 yep. The revenue from sales of 12 inch singles uh, fell every year, uh, fell, increased, so it's C. Um, at this point, I wouldn't even look any further. So again, in order to save time in this exam, you need to have an element of sort of belief in yourself, confidence that you've got the right answer. Just trust that gut and move on because there will be questions that you're going to struggle with more. So don't second guess yourself on the questions that you know for sure you've got right. I mean, there's just no way you could have got that wrong, right? Nine, which can be drawn as a conclusion. Now, can we be really careful that drawn as a conclusion is different to main conclusion? Main conclusion it is a um, subjective statement. It's something that we're trying to use the whole paragraph to prove. Drawn as a conclusion almost needs to be like proven in the text okay so we need like a couple of sentences to draw it together so in this one there are no shortcuts you have to read through all five options before you do that simplify what we're looking at here microscopic malaria parasites they enter bloodstream through mosquito bites infect red blood cells they then replicate and attack other organs until recently we wanted to block the parasites from getting into the uh, red blood cells then there was a study they were infected there's a protein pfca1 and, um, uh, and they use this um, to escape the red blood cells to infect. Then we look at a different group of children who are immune. They realize they've got an antibody that stops or locks the, this protein into the red blood cells. This traps the parasites inside and then they're destroyed. So scientists have since uh, reproduced this. They tested it on mice. Experts believe that after trials, we can use this for treatment in humans. Okay, so you see what I've done there? I've cut out quite a few words. I've just really simplified it inside my head and taken out any words that I think are unnecessary. Now let's see what we can draw as a conclusion. A, Rhode Island University is a world leader in medical research. No possible way we could prove that. I'm sure it's true, but it's not gonna be something that we can prove here. You would definitely need more data about other universities or some metric by which we measure this. After the discovery of this protein, traditional approaches to fight malaria will be abandoned. No, it doesn't say that this one's particularly better. It just seems to be an alternative, something they're considering and is interesting. Discovery of this protein is going to help scientists to develop a new way of combating malaria. I mean, yeah, potentially. Um, I think that 
yeah, okay, so yeah, okay, yeah, that's correct actually. So we have found this uh, protein by looking at this, we can now see there's the way that we had before, which is, well, it doesn't really talk about it here, but here now we're basically, well, stopping the parasite from getting in, but now we're gonna just basically lock it in and we can use it in the treatment of humans. There's your clue here. Um, and then all of this part about how it works. So confidently see, let's check the others. World leaders should support and fund the research. Yeah, perhaps they should, but um, not up for discussion really, not something that's being discussed in the passage. A unique feature of the Tanzanian children helped in the discovery of protein, uh, of this protein and its function in spreading malaria. So, um, you know, I don't think that's true because it's not a unique feature of the Tanzanian children. We've just got a subgroup of children who are immune to a virus. So I can see how that may seem similar, but it's um, kind of assuming in your head a little bit of what's gone on there. Weakening the argument, again, conclusion, argument weaken, figure it out in your head first, then look at the answers. So let's read through. Despite the government's promises to be better to businesses, we're now gonna change the rules so that couples can take uh, uh, paid leave following the birth of the child. This lets them take more time off. So that's the key thing, is, isn't it? It's gonna take more time off. This makes it difficult for those with family commitments uh, to manage their responsibilities. There's the reasoning. So they get more time off because it's difficult right now with what they're currently given. Um, however, for businesses and small businesses, um, they need guarantees that staff can operate the way that they are. And if this happens, this conclusion here, the new uh, proposals are undoubtedly going to make the system more complicated and therefore businesses will not employ certain groups of people. I'm assuming families, young mothers, young fathers, Therefore, they should be opposed. So the conclusion is stop this law because otherwise businesses are going to stop, uh, are going to basically discriminate against certain groups of people. That's because uh, businesses need um, structure and stability. And if this time thing happens, then they will no longer be able to be structured and stable. So let's see what we can do that weakens the argument. I can't really guess just from that what it might be, actually. It just seems kind of reasonable, to be honest. The example given is only one of a range of measures being proposed. It doesn't matter that because that measure will still affect it. So the argument is not broken up by that, by this statement. It will still hold, yeah? Many businesses now allow their employees to choose to work from home. Working from home is still working. The proposals from the government provide support for businesses to help with the cost of covering the work of staff taking leave. That would pretty much turn it on its head. Can you imagine people are sat around saying, this is a terrible idea? And then they say, well, the government's going to sponsor. Fair. The problems associated with covering the work of absent members of staff become increasingly difficult. That actually strengthens. The proposals will increase the amount of leave that employees are allowed to take in other circumstances. Well, again, that strengthens. Okay, that was a really fast one to 10. I hope you're becoming a little bit more confident question to question. I'm hoping that if you follow along with all these videos, then you are gonna start seeing the patterns, the shortcuts, and more importantly, just build up that confidence.